Hi there, and welcome to another video from Cornflower Iris. It's Amy here. So I'm going to do a different video today, something a bit live. So I've already prepared all the materials, and I'm working on a five and three quarter inches card blank that's square, and then I've got a few different mats and layers. So the mats and layers already have bits taken out of them. This is just to save on cardstock. There's no point in putting a whole piece of card down. I might as well use it for the other elements of the card. This is going to be for the Colour Throwdown Challenge. Um, I can't remember what number it is, but I'll have all the details linked in the video description below. I'm just using some PVA glue so that there's some wiggle time because each of these mats is one eighth of an inch smaller than the last. So it's a very small and fine difference. So it just allows me to put these into position properly, get them nice and square, and then press down. So that's the first part of the preparation done. I've now got this piece of card that is a whole quarter inch smaller, or three eighths of an inch smaller, I beg your pardon, than the card front. I'm going to use this lovely cling gold print background stamp from Hero Art. So I'm not actually going to mount this on an acrylic block. I'm going to prepare my cardstock with an anti-static bag. And this is going to stop any fingerprints and bits of powder sticking where they shouldn't, except where I'm touching in the corner, of course. So I'm using Versamark ink, and I'm going to do a kind of blending technique with some different embossing powders. So there are three colours in the challenge this week. They're kind of light purple, light pink, and teal. So I'm going to use embossing powders in those three colours. So oh, I'm going to carefully place this down. Being careful not to move it around. And then using a piece of copier paper, I'm going to press this really firmly and make sure I go over everywhere on the cardstock into the stamp. So this is a 300 GSM piece of card, which means that it's going to withstand some of the heat I apply to it, and also withstand some watercolour techniques that I'm going to hopefully apply later. We'll see how it goes. So there's a bit of Versamark ink on the outside of that paper, but I'll use the inside for the embossing powders. And you might be able to just see, perhaps not, but there's a slight impression on there. So I'll just quickly clean that stamp with a baby wipe. It keeps everything nicely prepared for the next time I use it then. Okay, and that's that done. So now I'm going to apply some embossing powders. So I have three different colours. I have this American Craft Sing, an Aqua, I have pink and purple, or lilac even, in the Paper Mania. So I'm going to go, I think, from... Why not go in a diagonal? I'm going to start with the pink. Make sure there's nothing stray on there. And gently... Put some about a third of the way down in a diagonal kind of pan. Okay. And then I'm going to make sure to tap off in that direction so you can see part of the image is covered. And then this excess can be put back into the jar for next time. over the top. So I'm going to make sure and overlap this slightly so that there's a nice blend of colours. Just in that region there. <laughs> a big lump. So this is far more than is needed by the way but I'm not going to waste anything because it will go back inside the jar. I tip it off in the same direction, and you can see how they've blended together really well. So that's the first two colours done. You can also see where there's some fingerprints just on the edge of the card. You can if I wasn't blocking the way. Okay. 
I will tidy the rest up later, but I guess with a live video, I have to live with it for now. And then for the corner, we have the aqua colour. overlapping slightly but this one I don't have to be quite as careful about. So you can see those three colours and how they blended together there. So I'm going to tap the excess back in the bottle and then melt everything. finished. So for this next technique I'm really making sure that that powder's out of the way. I've got some distress inks so I do have a backup plan if this doesn't work but I've got spun sugar, shaded lilac and peacock feathers that I think kind of match the colours quite nicely. So I'm going to smoosh a little bit onto my craft mat which is just a Teflon non-stick craft mat that resists the ink which is why it kind of bubbles up. Then I just have a little spray bottle of water, so I'll spray a little bit on. And then I have this lovely brush I've been dying to try out. It's got a nice wide tip that's rounded and very soft gold tackle. It's one of the Royal and Langnickel uh, crafters brushes. So I'm just picking up some of that colour. I'm going to do a very, very light wash over the pink. This is just so it's not a boring white in the background. I need to smoosh a bit more with these really pale colours. This sponge sugar really is it's delightful, but it's very, very light. i spray that right onto the card as well so that I can move that around. See, it's not a very difficult technique. Very, very simple. And then I'm not actually going to wash the brush. I'm going to keep some of that pink on there and then just blend in the next colour. I think that's turning out quite nicely. A rather pale look, but still quite nice. So I'll pat without the powder on. I just clean some of that up and then put some shaded lilac down. Probably going to use a little less of this colour. Just pick up a tiny amount first because you can see that's quite strong, quite bluish as well. So, what happens when you emboss something with embossing powder? Is that once you do some watercolor techniques over the top, it resists the um, the embossed lines resist the watercolor or any other kind of color that you put on top, really. So it gives you this really nice effect. Like if you're trying to color in the lines, it really helps if you're not so happy with controlling watercolor. But it also means that we still get this really vibrant effect once this color's been laid down, which is always nice to have. I'm just with the last ends going over a few times so the edge isn't quite so harsh. But I'm leaving some of the brush strokes in just to give it that really nice kind of handmade, homemade effect. And the final colour, peacock feathers. So again, this is a very vibrant colour. And by doing my strokes in one direction, I'm also in keeping with the whole theme of it going diagonally, which really does help. And perhaps a little too vibrant there. Let me just wipe some of that colour off gently. Okay, and that is the card front done, or that panel of the card front done. 
generally don't leave paint on your brushes. I just don't have a pot of water to hand. So now I'm going to use some more of that wet glue to adhere this onto the pink. And then because you can probably see that it's warped slightly, what I'm going to do to adhere this panel onto the card front is use some foam pads. So you don't need tons of glue. And this is just PVA glue from Hobbycraft. It's nothing fancy at all. So again, this panel is an eighth of an inch smaller and using wet glue gives me that little bit of wiggle room that I need. So I'm not so great at lining up straight away. <laughs> So now it'd be good to put something heavy on top. So I do have a couple of acrylic blocks because it just wants to warp. So that will do for now. I'll just pop it to one side. And then I have already die cut this Indian Ocean tack from one of Sue Wilson's die collections from Creative Expressions. And through it I've just threaded some Anita's everyday ribbons that just fit nicely through the hole. So what I'm going to do is put this on the front panel of the card and there is an oval that goes inside it which I die cut from pink cardstock but it's a little too small for the sentiment that I want to use which is happy birthday. So making sure that's getting some nice coverage. I'm going to use Versamark again. I get powder everywhere. <laughs> stamp this here, excuse my head. Okay, reasonably straight, I suppose that will do. And now because this is on the purple, let's emboss that in pink. Let me know what you think to the new video style, I don't think it's something I'll be doing very often. but. Um, it may prove interesting. So, you can see that I've missed part of the birthday, but I don't think it matters too much. So, I'm going to use a pair of tweezers to hold this. Stuff going everywhere. <laughs> And just melt it. So that's actually taken the qualities of the cardstock behind it, which is really quite nice. It's not too vibrant a pink, which I like. So this needs a little bit more glue in one corner, we'll do that in a second. First of all I want to measure out this ribbon. So I'm just going to wrap it around the card. That should be enough. And then cut it off. About here. So there's a map to go behind this of the pink cardstock. Nicely. So I'll use some of that wet glue again. So I'm using too much here, but if you squeeze it gently and just go around the edges, it helps keep everything together. There's nothing worse when you're giving a card to someone and it starts falling apart, is there? Okay. So I'm going to leave the ribbon part free just in case I need to move it. I probably will. Okay, so that's that glued together. Just line it up nicely. And now on the back of the card, I'm just going to adhere that ribbon with some scotch tape. So let me grab some of that. So we put the first piece down, look at the front line everything up so it's nice and straight and then stick the second piece down without walking the card we don't want it too tight 
without going over the front of the curb either. That would be nice. Great. So that's the panel. So to finish off, I'm going to mount that, stick that corner down for one thing, and then mount all this with some foam tape onto the card front. And then I have some gems here. These, I have a few different kinds. These are kind of teardrops, which are in the colorway of the color throwdown. These things are so fiddly to pick up. I have this nice nail art pencil thing. So if we try and incorporate the colours into different areas. I quite like the raindrops. And we also have some flowers in this selection. So you can spend a little time and make it look like the flowers are coming off of the branches. So I'm just going to arrange some of these now. I'll put on some music and catch you back very soon. So this is the dinky feather die from Xcut. I'm just going to put a line of adhesive down the middle, that's all that's going to be required. You could always give these some texture with an embossing tool, but I don't think they really need them. It's such a busy card front really that they would get a little bit lost. I think that will do. And the inside, I'm going to adhere a couple of feathers just to tie in with the theme. And I will put a custom sentiment in the middle and put some Confo Iris branding on the back. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll be leaving you with some stills at the end, as always. And if you really liked it, you know what to do. I'd love to hear from you, so like, comment, subscribe. Have a look at the blog, Twitter, Facebook, anything else. You're very welcome. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>